we all as men, no matter where we come from, we need each other to get to the next level. Uh, and it's very easy for us to come from a place of ego, the fact that we can do it all ourselves, right? Uh, and I think being part of that brotherhood just humbles you more than anything. And it makes you realize like, you know what? You know, we're all struggling with something. It, it takes courage, it takes boldness to speak up and to let the people know, hey man, this is what I'm struggling with, I need help. And I'm putting it out in the open, not, not keep it in mm -hmm. the dark because nothing yeah. good happens in there. And so when you bring it to the light, you have these brothers that you can rely on and lean on. And I think that's by far the biggest benefit of the brotherhood. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine entrepreneur and instructor for The Project. Welcome to The Project Show here on The Project Channel. This is a show for men that are in search of meaningful transformations in their, what we call the four F-bombs, the family, the fitness, the finance, and the faith. And this occurs through physical, mental, and emotional hardship and sacrifice so that you can become a better man, a better husband, a better father, a better leader, and just a better human in general. I want to introduce a very special guest, a graduate of the Project Class 005, Daniel Camaro. Thanks for coming. Awesome to see you. Thank you, Local Steve. California guy. So, Daniel, just, can you, just for our audience out there, introduce yourself real quick. Where are you from? What do you do for a living? Just give us a scoop. Absolutely. So my name is Daniel Camaro. I'm from Torrance, California. I am a broker in the financial industry. I manage my own agency of agents who specialize in retirement, insurances, and basically I'm excited to be here, Steve. So thank you for having me. How old are you? I am 28 years old. And you're doing whatever the hell you just said you're doing? Correct. I can't, that's almost above my head to even understand it. And yeah. you're 28 years old. You're going places. I'm telling Thanks, you, you're man. going places. That's, that's fucking awesome. So let's just jump right into it. And you're not married with any kids right now, right? No, so. no, married. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a committed relationship, but no, no kids right now. Okay, awesome. So let's let's just jump right into it. Let's let's talk about when you first heard about the project, when you first came across mm -hmm. it, whatever. If it was on social media, whatever it is. Yeah. So you saw a video, probably read up on a little bit. What was it about that that kind of spoke to you, that resonated with you? That you said, you know what, this is something I need to become a part of exactly at this time in my life. What was it that really spoke to you on that? So what spoke to me the most was the fact that in these videos and in the description of the 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 project, the program. I just saw a lot of people were just giving it their all. And I found myself in a position in my life where I wasn't giving it my all. Um, I was playing small and I realized that I was unhappy really more than anything. So I wasn't happy where I was. I was lacking in my faith, my family, my relationships, my finances, and I realized I need to do something better. Um, and when I saw the project, they really inspired me to be part of that environment, to really push myself to the limits and become the best version of myself. That's awesome. And just to go a little deeper into that, what were, what were some of the areas that you were like specifically struggling with when it came to the things you were talking about? Or what were, what were some of the areas you just needed to unfuck yourself on, really? Yeah, so the main things were my, my own personal development and leadership development. So those are the main two things that I honestly, that inspired me to do the project. Personal development was the fact that, like I said, um, my commitment and my faith, I wasn't in alignment with the person that I wanted to be in the future. Uh, I wasn't in alignment with the person that I've written down before describing that person and just realizing the fact that I wasn't on track for that mm -hmm. made me just uh, want to do this and put myself in an environment where I can grow. Um, leadership development, I manage a team and agency and I saw that my, my, I wasn't really uh, being the best example, you know, and I, I wasn't leading the team. I saw it, you know, become stagnant to the point where it wasn't growing like it was before. I was like, I need to change something. So those two things and the main thing that I need to do to uh, to unfuck myself was the fact that I just wanted to put myself in a position where uh, I wanted to go through some intense growth and I knew that required pain uh, and so the, that basically made me realize that I, I had to become worthy of the success in order to do so. So the biggest thing I learned um, going in through the project as I started was the fact that I'm worthy of success. You know, so unfucking myself previously before the project, I was like, man, I don't know if I can do it, like doubts and stuff like that. This made me want to test myself and test my limits. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're, so you're, you lead a team, right? In, right. in your business, you lead a team, you're 20 years old. How many, how big is your team that you lead? So how about a dozen licensed agents right now? Underneath you, that you're leading, right. you actively have to lead. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's freaking awesome, man. Yeah. On that note, I want to just, I want to give you a little credit being 20. I'll get men that are 40, 45 years old. Yeah. And the project is, is expensive, it costs $12,000. You could put deposits down, whatever, mm -hmm. we set up payment plans. But they'll tell me they it's too expensive for them mm -hmm. and they it's it's too hard. They need to put some take some time to put, put the money together or whatever it is. They'll make all these different excuses at 40 something years old. They've been yeah. in their industry for 20, 25 years and 
can't afford to do something that mm-hmm. they know they need and they make excuses. So I want to give you some credit that at yeah. your age to have the wherewithal to say, you know what, I know this is going to be worth my investment. And that's where you are where you're at 28 and there's other mm-hmm. men out there that need to unfuck themselves, but they keep finding these excuses. So I just want to say that. I cool, you know, wanted to give you some, yeah, thank you. some credit for that. that that's freaking that. awesome. It, at your age, that, that's just unbelievable. Thanks. So onto the suffering. Yeah. Onto the suffering. My specialty, my, my, my favorite part of the project, the suffering, the <laughs> no, pain. No doubt. The pain. So let me ask you. Obviously, you know that no growth, no transformation mm-hmm. comes without some sacrifice, some suffering, some struggle, and, and a little bit of pain. Absolutely. So when it came to the project, what was your least favorite evolution of the project or moment or, or task it had to do during the project? So I think it was one of the evolutions we did late at night. Um, it was the last evolution of the night, and it was at the park. Uh, and you guys had us spinning in circles. You guys had us running back and forth and just doing things. I was at a point where I was exhausted. Um, and that was my least favorite evolution. I don't like spinning. I hate being dizzy. So it made me really just disoriented more than anything. But that's, that's where it t- uh, tested our, our capacity to really just stay, stay focused on the mission, uh, memorizing the creed. So that night at the park was my least favorite evolution, I would say. Do you, I, I'm offended right now. I'm offended because <laughs> are you telling me a fu- we took a fucking stroll to the park? That was like yeah. a break. That was break time. Yeah. You know that, right? That was like rest time to go mm-hmm. just cool off, have some fun, fucking spinning around in a park and doing it. And that was your least favorite was, part. Man. That was the hardest part. It was because that was after the fact we did all the other stuff. And I'll tell you what, yeah. guys coming in, we're starting. We're actually starting a class tomorrow. You guys are fucked because if that was the least <laughs> favorite part, it just tells me we need to step up our game. So yeah. we're bringing the thunder coming tomorrow. And that's actually what D- D- Daniel is yeah. here for. He has volunteered time out of his day away from his, his, his girlfriend, away from his business to come and help us to be a junior instructor for the class starting tomorrow. So again, appreciate you coming down for that. But yeah. if that's your least favorite, favorite moment from getting a little dizzy, you guys are in trouble tomorrow. Well, I'm telling you, you guys are in trouble. I do want to share. I'm sure you're going to ask me what's my, what was my favorite part. So you'll be surprised. Yeah, we'll get that. to that. Yeah. I don't even want to hear it. Now you pissed me <laughs> off. We're, this show's over. You just yeah. ruined the whole, you ruined my whole freaking day. Like your, your favorite part was, oh, I mean, your least favorite part was playing at the freaking park. Yeah. So. It might have been during that park moment, or maybe mm-hmm. it was a different time, but every man at, at some point, especially during suffering, tells himself in his head that that little bitch starts negotiating and makes you want to quit, makes you want to give mm-hmm. up. And any man that says it doesn't happen or he never considered it is a fucking liar because I consider myself fairly manly or whatever you want to call it. And there's yeah. many times that in my head, I start thinking, you know what, fuck this, I'm done. I'm not even going to keep going. I'm not going to push through. So I'm sure you've had some of those moments yeah. during the project and just in life in general. So during the project, when you, you had those moments of, you know what, I want out of this. I, I, I'm, I'm going to quit. I'm going to mm-hmm. go ring the bell. I just, I, I don't have it. I can't do this. What was it? What was your trigger that in, in mentally in your head that made you not quit? What was your real reason? What was that you would, you would go to in your head to trigger you and prevent you from quitting? Yeah. So that was easy to be honest. Cause you know, going into the project, I already knew. Now the it's easy. Reason. Now it's easy. <laughs> it's fucking easy. <laughs> that, what, what? You guys are so screwed tomorrow. Class 006, you are screwed. And you can thank <laughs> your junior instructor here, Daniel Camaro. So, you can give him a thank. My point is when you know the why, the how is easy. So for me, the why was the fact that I want to be the go-to player in my family. So when I was in that evolution where we were really digging, um, and you know, you felt the pain, you felt the struggle, you felt the fatigue, uh, you know, the two things popped to my mind. The first one was my family. Um, second one was my girlfriend, you know? And so the fact that I was willing to go through that suffering for them made me realize that's why I'm doing this, you know? So being the go-to player in my family is by far my biggest motivator. Uh, and you know, when I felt like quitting, when I was tired, when I saw other guys quit, I was like, dude, I don't want to face the fact that I have to go back home and tell my family. They that, all knew hey, you were going there, right? Exactly. They, you, you kind of prop, you had months of preparation. Yeah, it, it was they public. knew where you were going Absolutely. and what it was going to be like. So mm-hmm. can you imagine what it would have been like yeah. to, to go home and have to say, you know, I quit, mm-hmm. I, I rang the bell. And, and on that note, I'm sure you remember every individual that quit during mm-hmm. your class and you had a, a good amount of them. And one of them actually, now you're here, you came back this week for a junior instructor. We have another gentleman coming back who quit during your class. Yeah. What, what do you think, how, how do you feel about that? Like that's, that's a, a dynamic we've never had. So it's gonna yeah, be interesting to see awesome. how this works out. That just the last class you graduated and you're back mm-hmm. and he quit the last class and coming back. This is gonna be a huge dynamic. So I'm excited to see how that plays out for you, for him. Yeah, this it's is like, interesting. It's like a storyline, like a perfect storyline to mm-hmm. see you know, his story of redemption, your story of, of volunteering your time to come and give back and pay yeah. it forward. It, it's freaking awesome. So that, that's gonna be interesting to see how that goes. So uh, from there, flipping the, flipping the switch over to what was your 
favorite evolution or favorite <laughs> moment or favorite experience of the of the entire event? So my favorite evolution was probably everyone's least favorite evolution, which was the right, now pit. you're really trying to piss me off. Now you're really trying to fucking piss me off. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. So it's called the pit, right? And they'll find out what the pit is once they once they encounter it. But the pit was my favorite evolution because right, I'm taking of... this off. The show is over. I'm taking this fucking <laughs> microphone off. That's like so, the most miserable part of this. I I I it, I want to quit when when they're going through the pit. And I'm a ruthless motherfucker, and I want to quit. But it's your most favorite part. All right, sorry yeah. for interrupting you. You're just pissing That's me off. That's all good, man. But here, here's the main reason why. It was because of the lessons I learned in the pit, you know? So obviously, actually doing the evolution wasn't the most pleasant thing. It, it sucked. It was the suckiest part probably of the whole thing. But uh, the reason I say it's my, my favorite one was because of the lesson, because of the person who I am today with the lesson I learned from that evolution so um if you guys are wondering what i learned the main thing i learned was the fact that i it was a leadership thing so when i started it in the project the main thing i wanted other than the personal stuff was the fact to become a better leader for my team and i learned that lesson in the pit and therefore it became one of my favorite evolutions got so, it so you had a huge take-home point and i remember that moment because there are times to lead from the front, right? Mm -hmm. And there's also times to lead from the back. Absolutely. Because then you can see what's going on, you can mm -hmm. direct and help those out that might be struggling. Correct. I remember that moment. So yeah, that, that's a great point. And that was a huge take on, I'm sure, yeah. that you have taken into your, your, your business. So Absolutely. To, on, on that note, you, what, what were some of the moments that, like suffering that you went through that at the time you thought was so miserable? And, and that kind of answered the question already, but any other moments where it seemed like it sucked, but then afterwards you look back and you're like, you know what, that was, that was fucking fun. Or that was, that, that was funny. Like a, a moment mm -hmm. that sticks out that at, in the Marine Corps, we had it all the time. We, we hated things we were doing, but afterwards we'd sit around and laugh about it. Like I'm sure you remember at the graduation yeah. dinner ceremony, mm -hmm. the whole time, all we're doing is talking about all the crazy shit that you guys right. went through. But really how, when you look back on it, how fun it really was and how exactly. like, you, it's a privilege to be doing that stuff. So right. anything that stands out, like when it comes to that? Uh, so when it comes to funny moments, I, th I think of my, my buddy, uh, my battle buddy, Kate's. So we all know Kate's and you know, this guy was a guy that we all thought was going to quit. We were just hoping he would quit so he wouldn't slow us down. But the guy was had perseverance, a made up mind that he was going to graduate and he did. And I'm so proud of him for doing so. But, um, but just for example, when he pointed out your shoes, if you remember that evolution, after we carried the logs, after we went through all that crap and you know, we were all exhausted, uh, you know, we, we basically tricked into the fact that, well, we should point out the fact that you have mismatched shoes. And that, going back to that moment now makes me laugh because, you know, the, the, the way Kate's just bought into the whole idea that he should challenge the fact that, hey, man, what's up with your shoes? Uh, that really made me laugh. And what led to uh, what happened after the consequences of that, you know, sucked. But going back in, in hindsight, it was it was hilarious. It was know? worth it. It was funny. It's something that you can <laughs> sit and talk about. And yeah, I don't know exactly Correct. what you're talking about. That was that was awesome. So let me ask you now, you, you go to the graduation you go home, right? Mm -hmm. Day one. There's certain things I'm sure that we'll talk about in a second that you realize after the fact, like aha moments you had throughout yeah. the weeks and months after. But what were some of the immediate effects, like day one that you can implement into your life that you took home with you after the project? Yeah, so one of the main things I learned, um, you know, through all the instructors, but mainly from Bedros, was the fact that leading with more compassion and being a more compassionate What do you mean? Person. I was teaching compassion the whole time. <laughs> that's bullshit. Bedros didn't teach compassion and empathy. I taught that. Those are my, that's my number one skill set. So, so yeah, with that, with that, I mean, I saw that as soon as I got home, I was like, man, everyone's dealing with something. Everyone has their own battle, struggle. Um, and I'm a person where, you know, I can be a little bit blunt at times. And, you know, sometimes I could come off as I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, and so going back, I was like, you know, what? I'll be more compassionate with my family. I'll be more compassionate with my teammates, uh, be a better listener. So those things I implemented immediately. And I found that was definitely beneficial. And my, my peers noticed it for sure. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I can understand yeah. that. So what I'm hearing you saying is that like a lot of things probably come to you naturally. Mm -hmm. You're a bright kid, you have, you know, you're, you're doing things, you're working hard. Mm -hmm. So you see someone that might even be older than you and more experienced than mm -hmm. you. And you assume they should be getting after it the way you are yeah. and they're not. And that can make you be a little more blunt and straightforward exactly. and realize that everyone's not gonna be like you. You're Absolutely. a rare breed, they're all not gonna be like you. Is that kind of what, what you're saying? Yeah, and so I can come off as a person who doesn't care, but I, I care more than most to be honest with you. And I think it was one of the things that 
made me, through the project made me realize like, you know what, be more compassionate, lead with compassion, uh, come from a place of service and love and gratitude rather than just, you know, making it seem like, hey, let's just get to the point, the bottom line, build a relationship, you know, spend more quality time with people. The project yeah. will give you more love <laughs> and compassion and empathy straight from instructor yeah. Steve, who would have ever fucking Man. thunk it, right? Awesome stuff. I appreciate you sharing that with us. So yeah. then, so that was the immediate effect you had. Mm -hmm. What were some of the longer term things? So some of that stuff will take time to develop, right? And then yeah. months later, you're like, all right, this is why we did this a certain way. What, what were some of the things that you kind of discovered and un unraveled, you know, weeks and months later? Now we're a few months out from your graduation. So a lot of things, honestly, is there, there's a list of things that I've realized that, you know, I've improved on and that I can still improve on. But one of the main things, you know, through the project, um, post project is the fact that I am worthy of success. I am worthy of a better relationship. I am worthy of love. I'm worthy of all these things that I want. And that's something that I learned, you know, through the examples, you know, with you guys, the encounters, the relationships, some of the phone calls I've had with some of the instructors ever since. And, you know, being worthy, really more than anything, that's that's by far the, the biggest takeaway from the project. That's awesome. And, yeah. and you mentioned phone calls with some of the instructors. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to you? And how has it impacted you to become part of this brotherhood yeah. because this isn't like just a mud run or you know some Navy SEAL fitness training or a Spartan race or some bullshit. You just get a high five and a t-shirt and you're yeah. on your way. The real beauty and the real value of this program is the ongoing brotherhood that we have, the lifelong yeah. brotherhood. So yeah. you kind of mentioned that with phone calls with the instructors. How has it impacted you and how has it affected you to become, you know, have this brotherhood to lean on and be part of this? Yeah, so the Brotherhood, I see it in two ways, right? I see the fact that we have a group of mentors now, a new group of mentors, leadership, good examples of success, and not only, you know, their finances and all this stuff, but their faith, the way they, you know, they treat their family, all these things. And so that that has been the benefit, right? You get a new role models, new pre people, people that you can look up to and go to if you need some advice, some counsel, some help. Um, and so even like going to your house, you know, that's been moments where I've seen you, um, in your in your habitat, right in your zone, and how you raise your family, the way you interact with your kids, and you know, inspires you to become a better man yourself. You know, so that for, that's my biggest takeaway from being in that brotherhood with the instructors, and then you have your brothers. You know, the people you suffered with. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that makes me realize that. Uh, we all as men, no matter where we come from, we need each other to get to the next level. Uh, and it's very easy for us to come from a place of ego, the fact that we can do it all ourselves, right? Uh, and I think being part of that brotherhood just humbles you more than anything. And it makes you realize like, you know what? You know, we're all struggling with something. It, it takes courage, it takes boldness to speak up and to let the people know, hey man, this is what I'm struggling with, I need help and I'm putting it out in the open, not, not keep it in mm -hmm. the dark because nothing yeah. good happens in there. And so when you bring it to the light, you have these brothers that you can rely on and lean on. And I think that's by far the biggest benefit of the brotherhood. That's yeah. awesome stuff. Yeah. And, and that's absolutely powerful and mm -hmm. even more so fucking priceless, right? Yeah, it, it, absolutely. No matter what. And let me ask you this. So when you were in the pit, struggling, being tortured and just absolutely miserable, mm -hmm. Did you ever think, like literally, I think a couple of weeks after graduation, you were at my house for barbecue, and then you came back over for a workout. So I think we've actually been over my house twice since then. Yeah. So while you were in there and you're going through this and you think I'm just the fucking devil, did you ever think that you'd be at my house a couple weeks later having a barbecue? In your <laughs> wildest fucking dreams, did you ever think that would happen? Absolutely not, man. I, I would have thought that I probably... I mean, I would love to kind of get to know this guy, but I probably won't because he seems so reserved and aggressive. But after the fact that after the project, we're, we're all you know regular people in a sense of you know we don't ever call me regular life, again. We'll be right? fighting. You don't ever call me regular. That's as big of an insult <laughs> well, we as you all, we can all get. have life. You know, we have have a life that we have to we have to deal with. And I just never saw myself, you know really building a relationship with you, man. And it's awesome. And that goes yeah. to show that the power of yeah. of the brotherhood that literally. He's in a place of, of suffering and, and feeling like he's being tortured by someone who yeah. might even get to the point, think, I hate this individual. And literally a couple weeks later, we're with getting our families together, getting to know each other and having barbecues, training together and just building the bond and relationships of the brotherhood. And, and yeah. it's an awesome thing. And it it, it's priceless. And, and I'm glad to have met you. So Likewise, speaking on that and building the relationships, how has the project impacted your personal relations in your life, both in your personal life, in your professional life, what other types of impacts has it had on your relationships? Great question. So the main thing is increase in communication. Uh, and so in the project, you learn how to become a good listener because you have to pay attention to detail. 
And so in my relationships with not only my family, my girlfriend, but in business, I've been a better listener, you know, and I found myself in a position where I've been paying attention to certain things that before wasn't really paying attention to. And that also has to do with compassion. Uh, and so I think in relationship, it has made me a better listener and that leads to, you know, better interactions, understanding, mm -hmm. you know, uh, digging deeper into certain things, certain issues, uh, and not avoiding those tough conversations. Um, and in your business, you're selling, right? You are, you're technically, you're selling, yeah, right? Correct. Always. Yeah, correct. Always. So how, how much has that, the, the trait of listening, mm -hmm. to be able to improve the trait of listening, yeah. there's no higher trait other than maybe discipline. Mm -hmm. Having discipline to be, a, to be a good listener, how has that impacted you in your, your selling and your business and even making more money? Because we know finances is one of the F-bombs because a man should be able to make yeah. money, build generational wealth, be able to provide mm -hmm. for his family, his friends, and, and, sure. and whatever else. So how has that, that, that increased capacity of listening, how has that affected your, the finances F-bomb? Yeah, so for me, um, it has made me a better individual to relate to a client because here's the thing, whenever, for example, when you get an objection in business, right, and people say, you know, I can't do it right now because of the money, mm -hmm. the time and all that stuff, it's not really that, you have to dig deeper. So when you become a good, better listener, you get a chance to really um, dig deeper and find out what's the root of this objection, what's the root of this problem or this excuse that they're giving you mm -hmm. that they can't do it right now or whatever the, the, right. the excuse is. And so uh, it has made me really be on, this, be on the same page with people and understand them more. Um, and then from there, tackle that, that challenge and come up with solutions, you know? And so it has led to more opportunities where whenever you see a client that you're losing, that you're kind of seeing, okay, before it would be like, you know what, man? Okay, let's get together whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I can now, you know, um, listen to the real objection and get to the root of it, I can come up with solutions. And then now it leads to them having uh, an implementation of the plan or whatever they're moving forward with, you know? Okay, so. that, that's awesome, awesome stuff. <laughs> So let me then ask you this, let's backtrack to when you were first looking into the project. What would you tell someone that was in your position that knew they needed to step up as a better leader, mm -hmm. a better listener, knew that you were capable of more than you were, you know, more than more bandwidth than you were giving yeah. in your life, in your relationships and in your business. What would you say to someone like that, that right now is having some of those same hesitations and fears and doubts and frustrations you were having that's thinking about, you know what, this product looks cool, but mm -hmm. I'm too afraid, it's too expensive, my wife's not gonna support me. Yeah. What would you say to someone like that? So number one, I would say, if you're scared, that's the number one you know, indicator that you should do it, right? Because you should always do something that scares you. That's the only way you're gonna get to the next level. Um, you know, fear shouldn't stop you. It should actually motivate you to tackle that fear. Uh, and I think it's something that keeps people from doing the project, right? A lot of fear of the unknown, fear of the finances, fear of all these things. And I just, one of the biggest things I would say to people in that situation is the fact that look for solutions rather than focus on the problem, right? If you're dealing with a financial issue, look for solutions to make the money, not the problem, the fact that you can't afford it now. Uh, look for solutions to convince your wife that you have to go to the project, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time. So I guess some people have to deal with that. And so um, be solution oriented rather than problem oriented. And then, you know, come in here with a made up mind that you're actually, you know, going to, going to become that version of yourself that you desire to be, you know, and so. So kind of what yeah. you're saying is that the reason that they think they shouldn't do the project mm -hmm. is the exact reason why they need to Correct. do it. Like, Absolutely. if you think you can't afford it, the fact that you think you can't afford it, and maybe that you can't even afford it, is the yeah. fact that you should do it because you can't afford it. Absolutely. You shouldn't be yeah. in the position where you say, I can't afford this because you're obviously doing something wrong mm -hmm. and you need to go a different route. Or you can't convince your wife to do it. The fact that you're, you can't convince your wife to do this probably means you're having some problems with that relationship yeah. if she's not supporting you in this. So the fact that you think you can't convince her and think she's gonna go against it is probably the exact reason why you need to do it. Exactly. That's kind of what I'm hearing you say. Exactly, yeah. So whenever you're battling that fear or that problem, think of the solution and just know that if you don't come up with a solution for this challenge or this mm -hmm. situation, it's only gonna snowball to a bigger problem in the future. So might as well stop it now and tackle it and, and be part of it and it'll change your life, that's for sure. Also what I'm hearing you say is AKA, just don't be a little bitch. That's what he, that's what Daniel Kamara is really telling you. So Absolutely. good stuff. It so is. now you're here today, we're starting tomorrow. We're getting fired mm -hmm. up. We're getting all set up today yeah. for coming back. Your volunteers, your time to be a junior instructor. What were, what are a couple, two or three pieces of advice you would have for these now both, again, an interesting dynamic that you have someone that actually was in your class that yeah. rang the bell that's coming back here. So both for him, and for all the other now candidates that are already registered, they're just now mm -hmm. in the bullpen, they're waiting to get their class yeah. started, both either tomorrow or an upcoming class. What are some 
pieces of advice and words of wisdom you now can give them now from the other side of the fence. Now you made it through the suffering and you've had these transformations and you're at a whole different level in your life now. Yeah, so number one, know that you're going into a war zone and you are bringing your brothers with you. And so if you come up with that, come in with that mindset of like, look, it's not just about me. It's not a selfish type of thing you're trying to do. Like if you come in with a selfish mind, you're going to suffer even more than necessary. Uh, and so going with the mindset that you're coming into a war with your brothers and it requires teamwork, right? And you'll figure out the rest from there. Um, number two would be the fact that take it one evolution at a time. You know, take it one evolution at a time. You can't necessarily get obsessed with the fact that, oh, I'm just trying to finish this whole thing. No, it's a bunch of evolutions that you have to get one at a time. It's overwhelming. And so if you take it one at a time, you'll be, you know, you'll be realizing like, all I got to get to, all I, all I got to do is get through this evolution, get through this course. You know, there's, there's a, there's an end to it. Right. And so just get through it. Um, and number three would be the most important, which is remember why you started why are you here? Why are you doing this? You know? And so usually I find that some people can struggle with that. And so my piece of advice would be the fact that if it doesn't make you emotional, you're going to have a really hard time at the project. So find a why that makes you cry really. And as men, we don't like to face that fact that we want to be in a position of crying, but you have to find that, that why that steers you up, your steers up your emotions. And it usually has to do with other people. It doesn't have to do with material things. It usually has to do with other people or even could be yourself. Like for me, being the go-to player in my family, but at the same time, it's not about me being the go-to player in my family. It's about my family and the people I love and even my future family as well, right? So that was one of the biggest things that motivated me to, to stay in the project. That's awesome stuff. And just those three points of advice right there, both for project candidates or just for any man in general, that stuff right there, if you just follow those three things that he just told you, like that's just, that's fucking gold right there. But for the record, the last time that I cried was when the doctor slapped my butt the day I was born and I slapped him back and they've told me I don't have any deer, tear ducts since then. So just make that clear before you say all men do this and that. I don't know about all that. But I appreciate you coming on the show today. Yeah, awesome Absolutely. stuff. Now, listen, men, if you are looking to level up as a husband, as a father, as a leader, as a man, just as a human, as an entrepreneur, this is what the project is all about. This is about going through some suffering, making some sacrifices, going through pain, but realizing there's a reason for it, there's a purpose for it, and there is an end in sight, and this is exactly what could take you from the bitch to the beast. I will talk to you soon. You are freaking awesome. No excuses. Thanks again, Daniel, for coming on. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure. See you.